Hey everybody, welcome to another great episode. Today we've got the honor of talking with David Sigrist. He is a financial planner. Uh, he's going to be telling us all about how to get ahead financially, what we should be thinking about, you know, as a contractor, how to pretty much just improve your, your bottom line and, you know, use your profits wisely, how to take, you know, advantage of, of tax incentives and, and how that can come into play. So... Thanks for being here today, David. Uh, how are you doing? Hi, I'm 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 doing okay. Finally had the chat with you. Share some knowledge. Yeah, definitely. I, I know you had a, an early day with you know, your networking, um, you know, meeting this morning, and I you know really appreciate you being here. So, uh, for our audience today, can you tell us a bit, you know, about yourself and what you do um, as a financial planner? Sure. So just, you know, about myself, um, one of the things that's great about being a financial planner is, and the reason that I love what I do, I make money work. I, I, I say, what do I do? I help people make good decisions with their money so mm -hmm. that they can grow and protect their their personal wealth. So, you know, whether someone's a contractor and in my morning group, I, I do work with many, uh, you know, several contractors and many who are in homes, I might say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I do is I, I, I just give them, you know, financial advice. So in terms of looking at your life, your financial life, that is in terms of your investments, um, your insurance. Uh, your cash flow, and especially mm -hmm. as a business owner, one of the things is no matter what stage you're at, you have unique risks and you have unique opportunities. So it, it, it's really important just to sit down and give some thought to your to your business in this way. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, finances, financial planning, it's a very broad, wide area, and uh, definitely a lot to to learn and know. And something I think a lot of contractors, myself included, uh, when I started out, was you know I'll just you know put money in my business, and if the business grows, I'll be you know financially well off but um, as I grow older and wiser you know I realize the importance of watching your money and you know using it wisely putting your money to work you know for yourself and, and all those kind of things so let's get right into it as like contractors business owners where should we start with like investing in profits right like instead of you know buying that new boat or the new house uh, we've got some profits we want to invest wisely or or know about you know where to put profits what, what should we be thinking about that's a good question so so Right when 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 I do approach most business owners and and contractors as well, this is you know this is the primary question is okay uh, I'm making a profit uh, where can I put the money so it can grow faster? Mm -hmm. so I just want to say one thing is that you know taking your profits and investing it is definitely you know a large part of what a financial planner does. Um, but I just want to highlight first that you know investing is just one piece of what should be a true financial plan. Okay, um, it's, not, it's not just first of all putting money into investments, which I'll say in, in a minute. But, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to think the first thing I always ask people is, well, OK, tell me about your cash flow, we'd say um, that is yeah. just basically, you know, how do you make money? You know, how much is coming in? How much is going out, you know, personally? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if someone's properly protected, um, if they have, let's say, you know, six months of uh, savings, you know, just in case they especially if you're in contract work, if you're not able to work, yeah. you know, you're disabled. Mm -hmm. Once kind of these, you know, like 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 T's are crossed, then for sure um, invest. So the biggest one is as a business owner, um, you have two areas. You say, do I want to invest personally through my own accounts? For example, talking about what are called your registered accounts. Those mm -hmm. are your, you know, kind of vanilla, your RSPs, your TFSAs. Um, yeah. if, you, if you have a kid, uh, likely an RESP, which can give you 20% mm -hmm. matching funds for your children. So on the one hand, it's usually makes most sense to, to just look around and say, okay, uh, make sure I'm making use of these funds. Mm -hmm. RSPs can lower your tax bracket. TFSA says can give you that interest-free growth. So on the one hand, uh, just making sure that you, you, you kind of knock those down. Then the mm -hmm. other hand is, yeah, investing within your corporation. And depending on how sophisticated your operation might be, this might mm -hmm. be within a holding company that you set up, or it might be through the operating company. Yep. And you know the reason that most people would invest through the corporation is because you have a different tax rate, mm -hmm. uh, as, as many might know. So you know I, I'm not going to assume every contractor has incorporated. Um, it, it's not necessarily the first step for everyone. Mm -hmm. But one of the large reasons people do that is because you can have a lower tax rate. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, the first thing is just look at your cash flow and figure out as long as I can cover my expenses, as long as I have, let's say six months. And really in these days with this market, so much is uncertain, you know, mm -hmm. I, I say six months or more. Yep. Once you have that set aside, mm -hmm. making use of your registered accounts, then it can start, then it can take time for investing. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, and there's both investing from, uh, you know, and, and this would, this would likely determine who you're talking to, but you know, 
there's investing in terms of how broad do I make my investments? That is, you know, mm -hmm. and talk about different asset classes like bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, or, you know, private equity. The other part of the conversation is just what is your, what, what are your saving habits like, you know, because a, a large pre, a large reason that some people like working with any planner is just you, you have some accountability, right? And yeah. it's not just an abstract number, but you have a specific goal in mind. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of moving parts, right? A lot of, a lot of options. Um, and it's just, it's about kind of optimizing and, and determining what's a good fit, you know, depending where somebody is at with, with their business and their income and, and everything. Right. Um, right. And, yeah. and, and, and definitely, you know, I, I kind of emphasize that last part to some people that you have a specific goal in mind, because that can give you motivation. You know, if, if yeah. someone, for example, they knows that they, they know that, you know, in three years, mm -hmm. I'm going to need this amount of money for a down payment on a house. Like, okay, yeah. that person's likely going to be a lot more motivated, you know, to, to, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's kind of, one of the pieces of that game is conservative yep. moderate to aggressive risk. Yep. So yeah, makes a lot of sense. Like what you said before too, with having about six months, you know, available to you in saving, especially, you know, talk about recessions and, and you know, things go up and down all around in business and, and especially, you know, contracting or whatever else. So yeah, definitely having some sort of safety net there, very important. So yeah. Awesome. And, you know, speaking of motivation, a big motivation long term is, you know, financial freedom, uh, retirement, whatever you want to call it. What are some tips and advice for, you know, when people are looking, you know, 10, 20 years out, 30 years out, whatever, depending on, you know, where they're at, how can they kind of reach their goals quicker if, if you know, the financial freedom is, is what they're after? For sure. For sure. That, that that's, that, that's sort of the, the, the broad, you know, the broad goal that everyone wants to reach towards. So, you know, like, like, like the one thing is just to know, okay, you want to work with a, with a planner or, you know, even if you're not, even if you're self-investing again, you want to have a goal in mind and you want to try to put that in something that's as specific as possible, right? Because if someone says, for example, whatever your option is, you know, I I want to be able to, let's say, you know, traditionally, you know, go to a tropical island, you know, uh, you know, just relax on the beach, you know, half the year. It's like, yeah. okay, um, okay, let's look at it. what would that actually mean in terms of a budget? You know, how much would you need per per year for that? You know, yeah. what are the costs going to be? And actually put a figure on that, right? Mm -hmm. Because essentially, what what uh, to 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 get to tips and advice for retirement uh, or financial freedom, you know, again, you know, different words people use yeah uh, it, it's when you can start doing approaching 100 percent of what you want to be doing right so mm -hmm. um, i say again let's get you calculated to what does that mean in financial terms so mm -hmm. for example you say you know based on you know we we, we we look at your investments we look at the anticipated growth how much you can put in there right and then yep. the very high level will say okay we are a certain percent certain like i like like with my clients i like to say 102 percent like to reach on the modeling mm -hmm. you know over 100 percent certain based on crash testing, based on past performance, right? Yep. I want to say that you can withdraw X percent of your assets each year with this withdrawal strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Adjusting for inflation. So for example, if someone is, let's say 50 years old, they need to think, you know, think positively, think that you're going to live to 90 or more, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. very reasonable assumption nowadays. Like if you're healthy and, and active, definitely. Yep. But you, you'd be surprised at the amount of people I talk to and with what they have at the lifestyle they want, it's maybe going to last about 20 years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because their grandparents' retirement meant, you know, maybe leaving the union at 65, mm -hmm. picking up your CPP OAS and, you know, yeah. kind, of, kind of waiting out for 10 years. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, right on. That, that's great. So... So I, I I do yeah so sorry so for some tips mm -hmm. I mean I mean that one tip is just get started as quickly as you can have yeah. a very goal in mind mm -hmm. um, and then how to get there so for a business owner I, I guess I can just say briefly it largely depends on what life cycle your business is in you know and I okay. I, I, I would assume with the work that you do with, with with setting up systems there's so much in the lifestyle of a business that each yep. one are going to have different concerns and different mm -hmm. opportunities yep. right you know whether for example you know whether you're a startup, whether or not you're incorporated, you know, you just want to make sure that your, you know, your personal liabilities are covered and that you have positive cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the tip is just get started as, as you can investing through your corporation. Yeah. You know, you, you might, again, so much of this is contextual, but common things to think about are, you know, to retain good talent, you know, and, and just, just to invest in people, you know, do, do we also open up group RSPs or, you know, deferred profit sharing programs are becoming mm -hmm. quite popular. Okay. Yeah. You know, do we have kind of the next level of insurance, keep people insurance, depending on what you do, mm -hmm. right? If you have a key employee who's really essential to what you do, um, you yeah. know, everyone's replaceable, but someone might have a, you know, a specific skill. Mm -hmm. you know, 
are, are you are you are you covered for that? If if you have an operation with co-owners, are you if you have not just a buy sell agreement that is in case one person becomes sick, mm-hmm. right? but is and is that actually funded? You know, do you actually have a way to to, to go through with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. So with so many of these pieces, you just have to really think through those situations because you know most of the reasons that there are business failure when it comes to your investments, it's usually because you weren't properly insured or you weren't properly protected. It's not because oh you are nine percent one year instead of ten, you know, as, as you as you wanted. But yep. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, oh, no, very interesting. I think t- things that many business owners probably don't take the time to to think through or are even necessarily aware of. Um, you know, they're usually worried about you know customers and employees and uh, yeah. and payrolls and, and all kinds of stuff like that, and not always looking like projecting you know forward or or doing like serious risk assessments of um, you know what happens if you know this and that uh, to, to the business and, and how do we mitigate that. So yeah. for sure, for sure, and that's that, that that's kind of the role of you know someone in my position is you know we we've seen these things happen, and so yeah, yeah. make sure you're I, again I, I do very intentionally say we make sure you're protected and that you can that you can grow. Yeah, definitely awesome. So what are some things that you see business owners or people that you're helping with financial planning like kind of getting wrong or any kind of misinformation you see out there or just like things that people continue to do even though it's maybe not in their best interest? <laughs> I, I, I see a lot of stories. Yeah, t- t- talk to a lot of people. So for sure, there, there's a whole host of things as as I'm sure there is with any contractor who, who's, you know, been in homes. Honestly, the one thing is just a lot of people start too late. Yeah, They don't start thinking about this till they're well in business. And this makes sense, right? You know, as human beings, we don't think about matters. Like we don't really intentionalize it until mm-hmm. it's really urgent and typically a problem. Yeah. So there's a concept that's called annual compounding interest. Mm-hmm. Annual compounding interest is just the fact that even if you just start investing something at let's say age 20 yeah. and you have that 40, say 50 years more time to grow, mm-hmm. that time is going to be the factor that's the most important. And it's the one that you control. That's going to grow significantly faster and higher than if you start in your 40s, which yeah. you know, around the time that a lot of people really find success in mm-hmm. their business. So honestly, just starting too late. And the other part, which kind of goes with it is treating it like a DIY job, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, no, you know, set, setting up a, a large part of planning is it, it's kind of like juggling. I, I should have brought juggling balls. I, I, actually, <laughs> I do that for the kids. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it really is just being able to put all these pieces together. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kind of what I do as a planner is I try not to overwhelm people. Um, mm-hmm. and, I, and I can kind of relate in the same way that uh, when I've had contractors come to my house, I, I, I don't need you to tell me all the tools and every, you know, this every process that you're going to need to in order to remove this fireplace, you know, install this unit. To me, yeah. that's not, it's, mm-hmm. you know, people have expertises and yeah, getting a plan involves asking all these questions, even if I don't, you know, get to, you. for example, yeah. yeah, your cash flow, you know, is it going to be sustainable? You know, how are you getting paid? Why are you paying yourself through, you know, salary versus dividends? Or, you know, how did you come about this blend? Mm-hmm. Insurance, sickness or death and kind of some of the matters that I talked about before. It's, you know, putting all these different pieces together so that, yeah, it's not, not the first time I've set up a plan, right? So, you know, they start too late. They treat it as a DIY job. And, you know, something I find is just people don't uh, just know all the different kind of products that there are. Like they don't know what is available in Canada and even specifically in BC that can help them. So, you know, yeah. being, able to, being able to synchronize your corporate investments and just your business contacts and your personal life uh, w- with your family. So I, I see a lot of business owners and I push myself because I can be guilty of this as well, you know, not mm-hmm. talking with their spouse about their goals, right? Okay. Yeah. Living, you know, like, like what do we really want to do? It's better to have the conversation early, you know, mm-hmm. than 15 years down the road. Yep. You know, and, you know, you have less, less to adjust for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All, all, uh, you know, there's a truism that every, not every person has a business, but every business has people in it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, definitely. Oh, that's uh, a lot to unpack there. And um, some great advice. I love um, like one thing that I always suggest about um, and help my business um, clients with is using allocations, right? Like sometimes when they're starting out, they feel like they don't have any money or, you know, money's tight or, or you know, it's, I'll just invest in my business. It, it'll grow. I 
double my business next year, then, you know, I'll be rich. Right. But often they do that, but then there's just like the revenue grows, but sort of the expenses and they're kind of stuck in the kind of that, that same cycle. Um, whereas when you use allocations, even if it's just like 1% to side for profit or, or whatever to invest, you know, just starting small and using the allocation because then it's no matter kind of how much revenue or money you're making, you're still setting something aside, even if it's just a small, a small something. And yeah, if you read any of like the investment books or, or actually do the numbers, like getting started five, 10, 10 years earlier compounds like significantly over, over the long term. And for someone to catch up five, 10 years later, they have to invest like way more money um, right. just to be at the same level. Um, so it makes a lot of sense. And then uh, what you said about the, like the D, DIY, like, yeah, I think every contractor is going to understand that, right? They've, they've probably been in, in a number of situations where, you know, you go to a house and it's pretty obvious that uh, things didn't didn't come together the way that they should, um, as opposed to when you get a professional, you know, contractor and who's, who's going to do the job properly and uh, and how much smoother and better it looks. Um, and just from a knowledge standpoint, sometimes, you know, drywall looks like drywall, but what's behind the wall is, you know, whether it's done properly or not. Uh, right. Makes a difference. right, right, right. So, <laughs> it's kind of behind the scenes, the, the things that you, you don't see, you don't know without, you know, being an actual financial planner and, and having all that, that information available. So awesome. So we, it's come up a bunch of times, like, you know, taxes, um, you've mentioned that a number of times, what, what are some things like tax strategies or, you know, stuff that, that maybe contractors aren't necessarily aware of from, from a tax standpoint that can, can help them, um, in their finances. Yeah. So this, this, this is kind of the golden question, you know, mm-hmm. because, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, it, it, I'm sure. Yeah. I was gonna say it's, it's, it's one of the most common things I hear from, you know, business owners is just, yeah, I'm just paying way too much in taxes. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. And the government is always, there's always policy policies that are changing they're finding different ways to, mm-hmm. to get to, it seems at least yep. so i mean I'll, I'll so a few things that are really applicable for every business owner it's not necessarily this is just financially speaking in general mm-hmm. um one is that again speaking of diy jobs near nearly anyone who is past that startup phase and is really busy with their work and really immersed in their business mm-hmm. should, should should use a bookkeeper right yeah. and, and the reason you know talking with the book you know today they're going to have services that scale you know from your budget it's not going to be too expensive as people might have mm-hmm. thought 15 years ago. Yep. So first of all, it's just, and, and as a planner, like I just, I, I, I love it. I don't know the analogy uh, for a contractor, but I just, I love it when someone has a bookkeeper because mm-hmm. I don't need to kind of bother them for all those fact finding questions. You know, it's, it, it's there in the spreadsheets, you know, it's been documented. Mm-hmm. So like make use of a bookkeeper. And, and again, not just for being organized, but from a tax perspective, they're probably yeah. going to be able to identify, you know, cause this is what they do day in and day out. Uh, mm-hmm. What are eligible deductions? You know, largely it's kind of the low hanging fruit, right? Because some yeah. people, they might not think it's worth it, but again, things add up. So, you know, money you might be putting into marketing, uh, money, if you have research and development costs, I, I don't know, uh, mm-hmm. those types of deductions, that's that, that's like really low hanging fruit. There's a few, I, I'm, I'm just going to list a few strategies that not a lot of people consider well, because there are, you know, there are a host of them, but let me list a few things that are just unique for a business owner. So mm-hmm. the, the one is just incorporating your business, or if you are incorporated and the situation has changed, uh, mm-hmm. you might consider restructuring your business. So this is, again, why a bookkeeper can be great is how are you paying yourself, right? So mm-hmm. one of the benefits of being incorporated is you can pay yourself some blend of dividend and salary. Yeah. You know, for example, in, in BC, it's actually quite low, um, the, the corporate tax rate. Um, you might mm-hmm. have heard of something called a small business deduction. So if your annual income is $500,000 or less, then mm-hmm. it's just a 2% provincial tax rate. Okay. Right? That's, that's, so that, so you, you combine that with just, the federal 15%. And mm-hmm. yeah, so you can pay yourself in dividends, which are, you know, tax preferred as opposed to salary. Mm-hmm. It typically makes sense to pay yourself some blend of that because without getting into a lot of the details, the, the, the dividends is considered passive investment. And one of the things that a good planner is going to be watching out for and a bookkeeper can give you clarity on is how much passive income do you have inside the business? Because you do, of course, like many ways, you know, we want to have passive income coming to us, mm-hmm. but the way that the Canadian tax structure is set up, if you have too much, you start losing some of those benefits. You're you're no okay. longer a small business, and now you're I don't know a legit business. I... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so you know and that, so that's going to depend on your personal situation. Sometimes you are going to be okay paying those taxes, some not, right? So yeah. um, having that blend of dividend versus salary, because with salary, I'm um, just thinking of a client I'm having this discussion with right now. You know, they, they want to be able to contribute something to to their RSPs, but also contribute to CPP to the CPP plan because yeah. this ability can be expensive. And if you're contributing to it, then you're able to claim 
disability should you need mm -hmm. to eat, right? Yeah. And, just, and just, again, with the corporation, there's a whole host of things. You can defer paying taxes until further years, you mm -hmm. know, well. And one of the, yeah, what, one of the huge benefits is that when you buy yourself insurance, for example, if, if, if you're getting permanent life insurance, which I won't go into that deeply here, but kind of one of the really great things about corporation is yeah. you can pre-tax dollars to fund these policies for you where the money is growing tax-free and it's paid for with tax-free pre-tax. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a huge one. So again, everything to do with corporation, working with your bookkeeper, that's really important. Yeah. Another one, okay, income splitting with family members. This okay. is a developing area in the law. It changes every year, so I won't kind of lay out specific <laughs> strategies, right? But mm -hmm. since 2018 with uh, what's called TOSI, um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to give an accountant, you know, uh, uh, kind of, if you want to scare them, just say the word TOSI. <laughs> <laughs> tax on split income uh, stands for. Um, it's it's still possible, but mm -hmm. since 2018, they changed the laws that you have to actually give someone a real income. They have to be actually working for the business in some way. Yeah, you, you, you can't just pay your kid or spouse a hundred <laughs> grand to, uh, <laughs> to 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 wave hi to people or something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. incorporate split income with your family members. If you're on the other end of the business where you're looking to either sell it or transition, mm -hmm. one of the really important things is called the lifetime capital gains exemption. Okay, right. So so lifetime capital gains exemption. So you're 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 exempt to almost a million dollars. It's eight hundred ninety-two thousand in change. Yeah. It is a million if you own a fish fishery or a farm, but you 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 are exempt to a certain amount of money if you want to sell your business. So just okay. make sure that your passive income, you, the assets in the business, aren't too great to us to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And and I'll, I'll just say what, what, one of the other things that most, if you're a mature business owner, something that you can do is called a individual pension plan. Not Okay. many people have, have heard of this. Um, it, they might call it an IPP. Mm -hmm. Again, I know I'm throwing lots of things, but these are just really yeah. mind-blowing things for some people. Basically, you can set yourself up with a deferred profit. Um, sorry, you can set yourself with a defined benefit pension plan. Okay. And standards that used to be common and that you see like in police, you know, police unions and teachers unions. So again, if, if you're in your mid 40s, cash flow is consistent mm -hmm. and your, your business income is going to exceed, let's say 150,000 in salary that you could do. Yep. You save significant dollars and fund that Caribbean lifestyle or <laughs> wherever you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Through, through a pension plan. Awesome. Yeah, no, very cool. You know, awesome. we went through like tons today. So I want to thank you so much, uh, Dave, for being here. And, you know, thank you to the audience. If your head's spinning a little bit from, you know, all these different options, by all means, you know, you can reach out to David, um, get some, you know, financial planning and, and advice. For people who have maybe more questions, I mean, you can drop them in the comments. We'll put some links in the description. What's the best way for people to connect with you, David? The best way to connect with me is my email i suppose okay. we can end the chat but it's, it's david.gris yep. at ig.ca okay and, perfect and following me on linkedin as well yeah linkedin's always great yeah reach out to david on linkedin uh we will put some some links in the description of the video like we said before uh any questions make sure you comment thanks again so much david for helping us you know come just more financially smart essentially <laughs> <laughs> again protect and grow your wealth start early things will be okay when you work with a professional you know <laughs> perfect